Okay, so here we are. Um, we are here tonight to have a little chat about your new book. Yes, it is. Right. So um, why don't we get started with a few questions, Roz Humphreys Perez, which yes, we ma'am, introduce you as uh, the author of this book that we're discussing tonight. So let's start with a few simple basic questions so that people can actually get a little bit of a feel or a vibe about who you are, right? So when did you first realize that you wanted to be an author? I was about probably 16 years old. Um, okay. I've always, I've always um, had a thing for writing. I did a lot of different articles and newsletters and, um, and even at school, I would volunteer for anything that had to do with writing. So I knew I wanted to be an author when I was um, at a very, a pretty young age. Okay. Point. And so, you know, this was inside of you, but you didn't really birth this until later on in life. Yes. Because from 16 until you birthed your first book, there was quite a few quite a few years decades. yes quite yes a few decades, right there were a few decades and you know part of the problem was um when i was writing my first book i had a uh, a coach an actual author coach and after we almost finished the first book um she told me something that stopped me in my tracks and i share it because a lot of times people think that um you know, that they're the only ones who put their, their dreams on the shelf for a little while. And, and I did that because she told me um, that I wouldn't be able to sell any books because I didn't have alphabets after my name. And so, and I didn't have the influence and I didn't have the education, you know, the paper showing that I was um, a master within that particular area. And so that was one of those things where it actually hindered me from publishing my first book. I, I got stuck. And I think a lot of us can speak to that, right? Where um, there was some kind of intervention, knowingly or unknowingly, early on in life, that kind of derailed you from the path that you were really supposed to be on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because I know, I know it happened to me, um, and I'm sure it's happened to so many, right? So um, the good thing, though, is that at some point, right, you picked it right back up and you said, well, you know, it's time to run with this. Um, you know, I had, um, I had, I had, I, I think that when that happens, God puts quite a few people uh, along your path to help you, you know, to get past that feeling of being inadequate or not being good enough, you know, all of those negative things that float in your head. And so... Um, it was a good thing because um, I had you who came alongside me. I had um, Terry Savelle Foy who came alongside me. I had my husband. There were quite a few people, you know, that, that were part of my, my cheerleading squad, right? Um, letting me know, you can do this, you can do this, go ahead and do it, you know? And, and I had people that were not part of my cheerleading squad that just God brought them in for a little bit. Um, and, and, and I was like really shocked because one of those people was Kathy Tricoli, um, you know, and, um, I remember that we had a conversation in the church offices and she literally got in my face, you know, in my face, <laughs> uh, didn't know the meaning of space and started to tell me, you know, that, um, many women needed the book that I was currently writing and that I needed to do it. And so. I, I had quite a few people that started really pushing, you know, me to, to, to get over that, that hump. Yeah. Kathy Tripoli has been used mightily for so many. Yeah. There's definitely a story in my book with Kathy Tripoli as well. So um, I just love when that all comes together, right? It and has. You can, see, you can see how God has used so many different people for so many different reasons and in so many different ways that you know you wouldn't even think like the Kathy Tricolis or the Tyrese Seville Foy's would play a role but yet they do right yeah um so moving on to this book why don't you tell us um this this book that we're we're reviewing today is Spirit Gal Here and this is um your third book that's been released right 
second. No, in, in the order in which they were released. Not oh, that. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so this was your third book that you released. Yeah, it was. And, and so we didn't, this book actually, what we did was, we did it for a conference. Right. And um, I didn't think that I was going to publish it for the wider audience. I really thought that I was going to just do this book for, um, it was a conference. It was a conference on how to hear God. And, um, you know, the Lord had given me so much material that I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to put this in a book. And it was just easier to put it in a book than, you know, we were thinking about, should we like print, you know, 150 you know, copies of this, um, just, you know, paper. And then we were like, nope, nope, nope. We'll, we'll make this into a book. It was a lot easier. And so then, um, you know, like two or three years later, or two years later, you know, God was like, I really want you to make this book available to the, to the, to the larger audience. And that's when we started to, um, take it apart a little bit again and start editing. Hold on. Cause you didn't let me ask my question. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so my next question was going to be, um, where would you say you got the idea for this book and what inspired you to write it? <laughs> okay. So it was a conference. We worked out the answer to the question. Um, so yeah, so it was, it, it was a woman's conference, and right. um, and and it was exactly that. Um, I I actually wrote this book in in two and a half days which I, you know, my other books did, they took a lot longer to do, but for some reason, you know, I felt that um, in my spirit that I needed to go into lockdown and it took me two and a half days to, to, to pump out this book. And I know that it was God ordained because there's stuff in there that when we were reading it again, it was like, wow, man, this was you, God. You know, I think it's, it was God. It was, that was a God inspired book. So let's talk about the title, right? Spirit Gal Here, right? Um, why, explain that title. What, what does that mean, Spirit Gal Here? Well, Gal is obvious, right? We're, we're women. And um, I use Hold the on, word I have another question. I, I have another question that comes right behind that one. With, <laughs> gonna I'm going to fire it off just so that you can, you know, <laughs> backpedal for a minute. Okay. Okay, because my next question is, is this book just for women? You know, um, I actually had Lisa, who's, who's watching, right, and begged me to redo this book for men. But this, even though it's a spirit gal here, yes, it was for women, however, I actually did have two pastors go through the book before um, I even released it for conference to make sure that I was um, biblically sound, right? Theologically sound in, in the book. And um, both of them, as a matter of fact, I had three pastors review it. One of the pastors was my husband, right? The other pastor was my father. And the third pastor was my spiritual dad, Eddie Rodriguez. And so, I wanted to make sure that it was biblically sound, but yes, a man can pick up this book and, and get a lot from it. I mean, the examples that I give um, are, are generic enough in most of the cases, right, um, throughout the book, but a man can also pick up this book and, and will receive, you know, the profound, um, the profound um, revelations that that God has wanted to reveal within that book, to speak to you through that book on how he speaks, because he speaks in so many different ways. Right. But right. you gotta have the ear to hear. So, I mean, I don't know if you recall, but I know that back when, when um, I started getting involved in this whole book thing with you, I remember um, years ago saying that um, a lot of this stuff has to be, you know, for men and women because the focus was always women, 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 for obvious reasons, right? You were the director of the women's ministry, blah, blah, blah. It's always about, you know, the whole women's conferences, so on and so forth, and that's the, your main general audience. But I always felt that um, men get kind of left out when they have, you know, more drama than women sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't say that. <laughs> so I just think that a lot of the life, you know, stuff that is discussed in a lot of your books, it's not just for women. I mean, no. women tend to be the general audience, but in reality, truth be told, it is something that I think any man can pick up and read and actually say, wow, right? Mm -hmm. There's something in there for me as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not beating up the men. I'm just keeping it real, right? Right. No, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's pretty much um, from, from most, like I said, most of the stuff in there, um, either, either gender can definitely re relate to. And so um, speaking from the woman pool, right? The women pool that would be picking up this book, who would you say would benefit the most from reading Spirit Gal here? Everybody. <laughs> so do you think that it, do you think that it speaks to the, you know, the just beginning Christian woman? Do you think it speaks to the young Christian women? Does it speak to the middle age seasoned women? Cause I'm not going to say old seasoned women. Does it speak to, um, you know, uh, who can pick up this book and what would be, um, the audience that you think can, can a grandmother give it to their granddaughter? Can a mother give it to their daughter? You know, yeah. can, right. so, so so I've actually had um, women, I had one uh, pastor's wife um, out in Florida who actually told me that she was going, that she had just finished reading it and that she was going to give it um, to her daughter. And then I had one of the photographers in church yesterday told me that uh, she just started it and she wants to get it for her mother. So I think what happened, especially with Spirit Gal, what I, what I tried to do was I went from the very beginning, the very basics, right? Because a lot of, a lot of people have asked me, well, Roz, how do you know um, that what you're hearing is God and, and how does he speak and how do you know that it is God? I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I, am I? Can I ask the questions? <laughs> I just need you to answer the one question that I asked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I go from, let, let, let's just say that I go from the basics and I work my way all the way, you know, to the more advanced. And the reason I do that is because even if you're a seasoned Christian, for example, right? Sometimes you can get so comfortable that you forget that there are certain hindrances that can happen in your life that will, um, that will stop you from hearing God clearly. clearly. And emotions, for example, I, I talk about emotions and that goes across the board, whether you're a beginner or you're, or you're seasoned, right? Um, where at times we're thinking that we're hearing God and we're not, we're hearing our soul, we're hearing our emotions. So you'll have to know how to tell the difference. Right. So I want to talk about, I want to talk about, um, how we, how you actually broke out this book into three major sections. Yes, I did. So this book was written out into three major sections. Um, and without giving away right too much about what the book is, cause you don't want to give too many nuggets away, but, um, I want to see if we can just briefly touch the, um, each heading right, for each section, with the first one being God's voice. However, I do have to say something. Um, so the first section, and I, I actually have the book here, right? The first section is hearing is God's voice, right? And just because I would be totally remiss if I didn't point this out at this point in this query about this book, in the first chapter, I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> So it says here, let me just read to you, and I'm going to quote. <laughs> and I'm going to quote, I'm going to quote. It says, um, my BFF, so it says, who is your best friend? Write the first name that comes to mind. My BFF name me that. <laughs> and yes, she's the first person that would come to mind, but did you know that 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 person's name, a physical person's name, would probably be our first answer. If I told you that your answer should have been the Holy Spirit, how would you feel? Now, what do I do with that? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. But back to, back to reveal. So um, 
<laughs> if I'm going to lose to somebody, I better lose to the Holy Spirit. I'm good with that. <laughs> well, Richie has a quick running up there too. So, you know, that's fine. <laughs> um, so let's go back to God's voice. Right. So that is the first section that you mark out. So briefly, just in a quick, without, like I said, without giving away too much about what that whole section is about, why did you break that out? And what did you mean by that? So, in the book? you know, in order for you to hear, there are certain things that have to happen in your life. And there are certain perspectives that need to be tweaked. So if you don't have the right perspective of who God is um, to you and for you, it's very, very difficult for you to be able to listen and say, oh, that's God, right? right. Um, and so I, I, that was the reason that I started it that way, because the condition of your heart and the condition of your perspective you know, of God is going to affect how well you hear. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good, right? That's, I think that's really something that people tend to not pay attention to. Right. 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 People tend to not begin to realize that um, you have to be able to hear God. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we have to, you know, we have to knock out the noise. Right. 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 Knock out the noise. So that's, that's, so that's kind of what that whole section speaks to, correct? Yes. So it talks about, you know, um, it, it talks about the basics again, you know, how, how you view God and then, um, and then how God speaks, because that's very important. Right. And you talk in that section. So then you have subsections where you have, um, so you talk about being free, you talk about your best friend, you talk about ears that hear, and you talk about how God speaks. So I think that's very important because I think that is all part of understanding, right? Um, how is it that you hear God, right? When, right. Hearing, when you hear the voice of God. So um, there's some good stuff in those. And then you went on to your next section, which were hindrances. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? What did you mean by hindrance? So there are things that will stop you from hearing God, or there will be things that um, will also, also take and make you believe that God is speaking and he's not. So you have to be very careful about that. And then there are hindrances that sometimes we think that it's, you know, uh, for example, the things that have happened in your life over the years and you think that they're normal, but they're not, you know, they're, they're strongholds. Right. And so, you know, sometimes you, you, you think, okay, um, you know, this has happened in, in, my, in my life or this has happened in my family and all of us go through this and all of us have this, you know, this is how we act. And, um, they're not really um, things that are passed down. They're actual behaviors that are learned. And some of those behaviors have become strongholds. And that can even be believed to be biblical teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that can absolutely be that as well, where people have for generations handed down different things that they call, you know, um, faith filled actions or mm -hmm. mindsets or anything like that so that is all part of those hindrances right that you speak of which um there's some good information that you put in those three chapters that you those three sub chapters that you go to which are based on emotions strongholds and focused uh hearing right so um there's some good information in those that people might I give a lot of, I, you know, one of the things that I was like, even surprised with, right, because when you put a book down, and then you go back and read it again, um, there's a lot of real life examples in there. Yeah, you know, yes. things that you could say, Oh, okay, I get it. Because I either I went through that, or somebody else went through that, or it was something that was, you know, that you can relate to, because maybe the the issue was a little different but the emotions were the same you know that that you felt about 
um, certain areas. And then the third section that you chose to break this out into was hear and do. So let's talk a little bit about that. What did you mean with those three chapters? So hear um, and do is, okay, you hear God, for example. So what do you do after you hear God? And there are certain instances where um, you have to be careful because there are certain instances that God will drop something in your spirit, right, about someone. And it's not for you to go around and start telling people, oh, you know, so-and-so is, you know, do, going through something and blah, 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 blah. No, it's maybe that God wants you to come alongside them, you know, for a season, or he wants you to just pray for them, you know, um, or, or he wants you to sit down and talk with them, maybe even um, encourage them or admonish them, you know, with, with love, of course. But, you know, or it could be a number of things, but there are times that God wants you to be quiet. He, he doesn't want you to be, you know, talking or anything like that. He's just giving you instructions. Sometimes it's for the future. And, um, you know, I remember when, when I was teaching the vision board classes and, and I, you know, I taught them, you know, for several years. In the beginning of the year, we, we would do that so people would learn how to do their vision boards. And one of the things that we used to instruct them is don't share the dream that God has given you with everybody because not everybody's supposed to know about it and not everybody's supposed to hear it because it's for you and it's probably for you know your, your inner circle or your best friend so that you can pray together about it until it becomes, you know, it, it, it comes to fruition. And, and a lot of times we're so fast with um, divulging things that God has given us when we're not supposed to. And then the flip side of it is when God tells you to do something and you don't want to do it. <laughs> Reminds me of somebody I know. I wouldn't know about that. Um, so, um, in that section, you actually covered the challenge to believe. Yes. Right. The obedience and the hear and say. So I okay. think that's um, pretty clear on understanding that, like you just said, sometimes the do is nothing. Yeah. Right. In the moment. Sometimes the do is nothing. And I, I agree 100% that sometimes um, we need to let stuff marinate, right, in what it is that the Holy Spirit is really trying to show us before we try to run ahead of the Holy Spirit, right? Because a lot of times we're not given things in its, in its totality. We're not given things completely. And we're not given things um, with complete understanding of how it's going to start, um, work its way through, and much less finish, right? So sometimes the important part is understanding that um, the obedience in the here and do is critical. I think the obedience in the here and do and obedience period, right, is, is, is so important because um, God will challenge you in that area. <laughs> you know, when you start to really hear him, he's going he's gonna to challenge you in that area. That's an area that a lot of people don't, don't like. You know, we kind of like, Skip, skip through that scripture, you know, and, and, and we, we always go by that grace thing, right? Um, and the grace thing is beautiful, but you know what's more beautiful when you understand the, the, the cost of grace, right? So, so, you know, we talk about being in the valley, right, versus being in the mountaintop. And a lot of people talk about the, um, you know, um, the pruning season, right? Which is part of that whole valley season. And they talk about, you know, not liking the pruning season. Who likes the pruning season? Nobody. <laughs> right? But there's really no way to get to the mountaintop without the pruning. There's no. never, ever going to be a fruit, right? That doesn't get pruned. There's never, ever going to be um, breakthrough in an area that you are not put through something, right? Correct. So they you can see the hand of God because if you just, you know, when walking through the valley, you know, you like lilies of the valley and didn't have a 
care in the world, then how would you ever, ever, ever be able to say, but God? Yeah. Right. When would you ever, ever, ever be able to say that? So, you know, it's all part of that obedience. It's all part of that hearing. It's all part of that being quiet. It's all part of that um, understanding, right? Who and how God operates in our lives. So in this, in this, so in these three sections, you take it from um, the very beginning, right? Very basic, very beginning to hearing God all the way through to actually responding, right? So yes. when you do see God working in your life and when you do start to hear, um, you know, what the Holy Spirit is, is, is trying to get you to see. So it's about that spirit in that gal that starts to hear. Mm -hmm. Right. And, so, and remember that God speaks to spirit. You know, a lot of people think that, um, that God speaks to, to emotions, to your soul, right? Your mind, your, your, your intellect and God, you know, it's very clear in spirit, in scripture, he speaks spirit to spirit. Right. And so, and I think that that, that's a, that, that, you know, that might even be a whole nother book because, yeah. um, <laughs> that might be a whole nother book because the whole concept of, you know, spirit to spirit is so needed because so many Christians don't understand that the alignment has to be spirit to spirit. Absolutely. Right? Because we can't align to God as if he was man like us. No, it just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't, no. It, there's no coexistence in that. So, um, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's, it, like I said, in this book, very clearly, we talked about why did you name it that spirit gal here? Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that girl, your spirit needs to hear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what was your favorite part of the book when you were writing this book? What was, if you had to pick out one of, let's just say these three, um, categories what would you say is your personal favorite what really you know took you to your knees and saying holy moly I, I think that my my personal favorite section was the hindrances and and I'll tell you why right because I know that there are people or or you know that sometimes say you're too emotional to women, right? But God made us emotional, that's who we are. And so to, to really dive deep and look at your emotions, your personal, personality, how God made you, and, and to be comfortable in who you are, but understand that, you know, that yes, God made you a certain way, you're emotional, you have a certain personality, personality and he works with that but he expects us you know to like you said flip that script right um I always say it's a poll you say it's a script right but I always have like the the vision of the poll where the top part of the poll is your spirit and the bottom one is your soul and sometimes your soul is up here and your spirit's supposed to be up here so you got to flip the script right or flip the poll and 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 align yourself and then the stronghold i enjoyed it so much and i know that it's an area that people don't like to speak about but i enjoyed it so much because it was um part of the example that i used was one of the studies in rick renner that rick renner had given and i actually spoke to him um the last time he was here that he visited church i think it was this a few months ago that, that he came and I actually told him about Spirit Gal. He's waiting for a copy so he could see, um, you know, what I, I pulled um, from one of his studies. But it, it, it's really cool how you explain, how you can explain how strongholds happen. But I think the, the, the part that made me so excited, um, I think it's, it's in the emotions part of this. The one that like really jumped out of the page that made me so incredibly happy was the part where it describes how the Holy Spirit um, will actually jump in the pit that you created. Right. right. You know, that there's a that we create our own pits and he'll actually jump in that pit and go through the emotions that you're going through. And even more where he gets totally pissed off that you're in that pit that the enemy 
has tricked you, you know, and, and you've fallen into that pit. And that pit can represent so many different things. But him being so personal on the emotional side, for me, it was like a super eye opener. It was like, okay, I understand why, um, why he needs to be my best friend, right? Because he takes it, he takes it a few steps. Like, imagine having your regular best friend, your girlfriend that's a best friend, and you you already understand the 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 tie that you have, that soul tie that you have with that person, and put it on steroids. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay. And for me, that that eye opener while I was writing that, um, it, it was it was number one, it was freeing. And it was, it was comforting to know that we had such a personal God. We're going to leave that right there because I don't want you to give it away. So um, we're going to leave that there. And then um, what I, the next question that I had for you was, what do you hope will be the message of Spirit Gal here? So when, what, is, what is the hope that whoever and everyone who reads this message because everybody will walk away with something different but what is the general consensus that you would want everyone to walk away with that god really really wants to be heard he didn't stop talking he's always talking as a matter of fact he'll talk us out and we as women talk i forgot how many thousand words i think it was thirty-five thousand words a day and God will still out talk us. He's he's always he's always talking. You know he's always trying to get us um get um get our attention. He's always wanting to communicate and let us know that he's here. That he wants to be with us. And we're in a time, Eva, that we need to hear God. There's a you know our environment is really bad out there. You know, and there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of um you know, contention or tension, and there's a lot of hatred, and, and we need to hear God so that we, so that we can be comforted, right, but we can also comfort other others, and we also have to learn how to speak in truth, you know, and, and stop you babying people, you know, and stop with this whole thing of people getting offended so easily and, and, and stick with what scripture says and just, you know, speak truth. And, and that has been, that has been the uh, topic that I've been on forever, but especially lately. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's always that, you know, running joke amongst the people, um, that I always say, I live in a house of truth. You may want to come in the front door or you may not. Right. Um, because too often people are quick to turn your truth into their offense. Right. So and, and so just imagine Jesus, right? Jesus in his time, he didn't mince words. You know, he, he told you exactly how it was. He loved on you, but he told you exactly how it was. And I'm not saying that, um, that, that I'm not giving anybody permission to create offense. That's not what I'm saying. Sure. Uh, but what I'm saying is that um, we're not supposed to be walking around on eggshells as a norm. Right. That, that's not living in freedom. Right. Um, so that wraps up the um, interview on Spirit Girl here. But I, what I do want to ask you is where can anyone go and get Spirit Girl here? Where can so, they purchase this? It is available on audio and it's available in paperback. I'm no, not it's available on paperback and it's available on Kindle. Right. And we're working on the audio. We're so the audio. by the fall, it'll it'll be done, but we'll announce it when it's out. So where can where can you get a Kindle copy or a paperback? So the paperback is available on Amazon and the Kindle is available on, on Kindle. On the Kindle app. And so are both of these available via your website? People can just go to your website and link. Yeah, if the website will direct them to Amazon. So they, you know, if they want to go directly to Amazon, that's fine. If they go to my website, it'll redirect them to. to so the Amazon. website, just so that we're clear, is www.roshumphreys.com. Right. And we will, the, uh, you can have all the information there and actually there, they can find other books that you have already published. 
Yes. Right. And um, there's a bunch of good information on your website. So again, that's www.roshumphreys.com. Right. So that concludes, right, our little interview on Spirit Gal here. And we just hope that everyone is encouraged. Um, there's been an enticement that'll make you want to go out and get this book. Uh, it's a great read. Either, listen, no excuses. Kindle it or paperback it. You can get it. So right Lisa, Lisa has it. read it. <laughs> Lisa has read it. She certainly has. And she has been um, more than generous in sharing the fact that she has thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's a good thing. Um, so if you need to give somebody a gift, somebody who you know who may be struggling, somebody who you know that can benefit, we all can benefit from it. But if you specifically know someone that can benefit from it, you know, you never know what seeds you're planting, right? By just having someone open a door with something with a simple as read. It is a quick read because Spirit Gal here is a quick read. Um, and it's, you know, chock full of nuts. So you should run out and go get it. Anything else you have, Roz? That's it for today. All right. 